got another set of questions for the A-Level Chemistry Multiple Choice Practice Playlist. So this is number six now for AS Chemistry. Hope you liked the video and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So for question one, we've got to have an awareness of the type of forces that we've got to break um, to boil these substances. So in ethanol, you're breaking hydrogen bonds. Heptane, it's London forces. Sodium chloride, it's ionic bonds. And water, hydrogen bonds. So the strongest out of all of those are the ionic bonds. So sodium chloride will have the highest boiling point. So C. Number two, so obviously the most electronegative atom is going to be delta negative. Least electronegative is going to be delta plus. And the only one that's the right way around is A. Number three, so the first three substances are all acids. So if you put them in water, they're going to release H plus ions. Ammonia, NH3, when you put that into water, it becomes NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide. Obviously, you can see there's OH minus ions there. So D was the answer. Number four, so there's all the answers there. So that was just the mass of carbon divided by the MR. And you can see C has the percentage 82.8. Number five, first thing I'm going to do is calculate the moles of each gas. So that's the volume. And because they're all in centimetres cubed, I'm dividing by 24,000. And then once I've got the moles, I'm just going to multiply by the MR and that'll give us the mass. So this first number here, these are all the moles, multiplying that by the MR, so you can see that the heaviest one is C. Number six, first thing I've done is worked out the moles of KOH and CaOH twice, so that's just concentration times volume in each case. And then the next thing I've got to do is work out the moles of OH minus ions. So for KOH, it's going to be the same because there's one OH minus ion per mole. Whereas in CaOH twice, you've got two moles of OH minus ions. So we're going to need to double this one. So the total moles of OH minus ions is 0.175. The total volume is 250 plus 750 cm cubed. So it's one decimeter cubed. So that's the concentration as well. So D is the answer. Number seven, straightforward. So B is obviously the right answer. You leave the droplet in the tip of the pipette. Moving on to number eight, so this is testing our knowledge of the period three trend in first ionization energy. So remember you've got the general increase as you go across the period, but you've got these two rogue ones. So aluminium drops slightly for aluminium because you've got the, the first electron in a slightly higher energy P subshell. And for sulfur, it drops again because you've got that first paired electron in a P orbital. So if we just look at the sequences till we get the right one, so sodium, yep, definitely the lowest, but magnesium's not next lowest because obviously it's higher than aluminium. So A is wrong. Moving on to sequence B, so starting with magnesium. So magnesium is not the lowest, aluminium's the lowest. So B's wrong. Sequence C, so starting with aluminium, then silicon, then phosphorus. Yep, that's the right one. So C was the answer. Number nine, we just need to work on the P subshell configuration. So aluminium, obviously one unpaired P electron. Oxygen, you've got two. Um, chlorine, you've just got the one. Obviously phosphorus is P3, so they're all unpaired. So that was the answer. Number 10, we've got a table full of enthalpy changes of formation. We're using them to calculate this enthalpy change of combustion for C3H6. So that's the formula we're going to use, but I just remember it as when you use an F, it's P minus R product minus reactants. So I'll just put the numbers in and you should get minus 2060. So the answer is A. Number 11, when you increase the temperature, the Boltzmann curve shifts to the right to the high energy and also the maximum drops. So A is the right answer. Number 12, statement C is the wrong one because what it should have said was the concentrations of the reactants and products remain constant. 
Number 13, so the isomers have all got to be unsaturated, so they've got to have CC double bonds. We can't have any rings. So the first one we'll go for is that one, butene. Second one, butene, but this one can show EZ isomerism. So the one I've drawn there is the E form, so you could have also had that one, the Z form. And then the other one is 2-methylpropene, so that one there. So the answer was 4, so B. Number 14, just a definitions test. So a curly arrow represents the movement of an electron pair. So B is the answer. Number 15, so because these are all structural isomers, they've all got the same number of electrons. So it's going to be down to the amount of branching. So more branching means weaker induced dipole-dipole interactions or London forces. So D's got the most branching. That's the answer. Number 16, so I've just drawn them out to help explain. So in A and C, all tetrahedral, so 109.5 degrees. D, you've got trigonal planar around the carbon, so that's 120. In B, you've got two angles. You've got the tetrahedral part. And you've also got the smaller angle, 104.5 degrees, uh, on the OH around the O because of the two lone pairs on the oxygen. So that's your smallest angle. So B was the answer. Number 17. So the longest continuous carbon chain is six long. So this is a hex. So that means C and D are out. And then the functional groups, the lowest numbers you can get for the functional groups are 1 and 3. So B is the answer. Number 18, so the simplest alkenes are ones with one carbon-carbon double bond, uh, CNH2N. This is a diene, so it's got two carbon-carbon double bonds, so we need to knock two more hydrogens out. So it goes to CNH2N minus two. So that is option C. Number 19, you see I've already answered it, so B is the answer, so why is A wrong? UV forms the radicals by breaking the bonds. Infrared is a cause of global warming and climate change, and infrared is used in modern breathalysers, not UV. And finally, number 20, so the first thing I've done is just drawn up the monomer in this format, and just identify which skeletal formula is the correct one. It's A, so you've got CC double bond, CC double bond, H is on the first carbon, and an H, and then a CH2OH. So A was the answer.